Mike MDs, we're working today on a 2002 BMW 3 Series, oldie but a goodie. Now this one had a leak in a weird spot. It is common on higher mileage cars. This thing has over 200,000 miles. That's usually when it happens around 200,000 miles. Uh, you may think it's the water pump or something nearby or even the oil filter housing uh, will sometimes leak, leak coolant as well. But this is coming straight down from two pipes that go into the cylinder head. And we've already taken a bunch of stuff apart, hoping to see it in there, but you can't. It's hidden in there. As you can see, we have all this stuff apart. Took the throttle body out, uh, a bunch of trim, some hoses, some pipes, the disavalve. Um, all this stuff is plastic, so if you're doing this job, just take it easy. Uh, tread lightly, because uh, some of this stuff is going to break, obviously. These here are the pipes I'm talking about. They bolt into the side of the head. Uh, and then one goes sideways right there and the other one goes up from the bottom uh, just like that and once we have it apart more we'll be able to see uh, what we're talking about all right now we have everything disconnected from underneath and the fuel rail is undone uh, disconnect the battery obviously if you're going to do that and again this isn't a how-to video this is just information only so all right so Danny's pulling the intake manifold off you can see we left the injector rail on there uh, this car is old so we don't want to touch any of that stuff that we don't have to. More little surprises under there. Still connected. Okay, so we do. Okay, we can we can leave it like that. All right, the intake's off now. We put it to the side. We normally take it all the way off, but like I said, this car has higher mileage, so we're kind of just laying it over because there's still stuff attached. It gives us access to these pipes that we're talking about here. Here's one right here. Here's the other one. And when you pressure test them, they usually leak right at the cylinder head where they go in. Uh, once we have these out, we, you'll be able to see and get a better idea of what's going on there. Alright, the old pipes are out. You can see where the tips had broken off inside the cylinder head. That's likely to happen to you. Uh, when cleaning that out, just be careful because it is the, the raw metal of the cylinder head, which is aluminum. And a lot of times you will get uh, like a, some pitting uh, or some, you know, stuff like that. You're going to have to sand some of the debris out. Uh, if it is like that and it's not mirror image smooth, then what I would do is when putting this back together, I'm gonna put a light coat of like gasket maker, RTV, uh, high temperature type of stuff on there so it's not gonna leak again. That's not really my style, but you have no choice. What are you gonna replace a cylinder head? No, so you gotta make a compromise there. If it is a mirror image smooth uh, surface when pulling out, then you can just lube it with something And you can see the new pipes are bolted in. Don't use any aftermarket stuff. Uh, use the factory ones on here. I have used them before because I figured, oh, the car's old, doesn't need factory stuff, and it ended up leaking. The O-rings aren't, don't quite fit good as factory. And you can see right here we actually replaced as well while we're in here. This is the oil feed line to the Vanos system here. A lot of times when you move this around, you go back together, it'll leak at the crimp. So these are cheap. You might as well do it while you're there. Another good idea why you have the intake manifold off is to replace the engine oil separator system. This is it right here. This is it right here. And this pipe broke while we're out. It's brittle. Um, but this one's been replaced, so we're probably not going to replace it. We'll ask the customer when's the last time it was replaced. But you can buy a kit. It comes with all these little pipes and, and stuff like that. So it's it's already out, it's not a bad idea to do it now. It's a lot harder to do it when it's in the car. Everything is going back together smoothly. We're gonna fill it up with coolant, uh, bleed it, pressure test it, and test drive it, make sure there's no more leaks. Okay, finally everything's back together. I wanted to touch base with you on how to bleed these older engines here. You basically fill it up 50-50 mix with the BMW fluid. Uh, you can order it through AutoZone as well. Uh, there's like a different brand name. Uh, it's a blue fluid, like an indigo. Uh, you fill it up to the top, uh, you hit this little bleeder screw right in there, 
and until bubbles come out and the fluid starts coming out as well, you can tighten it, uh, put the cap on, start the engine, turn the heater all the way on full blast. Uh, I like to do it through either the feet or the top there, because sometimes through the face it doesn't really open up the heater valves. And you want to get that circulation to the heater core uh, so you don't have any air bubbles in there. If an air bubble does get trapped, uh, it can cause it to overheat uh, temporarily or intermittently. So just get all that air bubbles out. Let it run for a little bit. Uh, you can let it cool down and check it. Um, but while it's running, after you do all that and everything's buttoned up, um, let it run there. Rev it up for a little bit at 2,000 RPMs just for a couple minutes to help the flow of the water pump to move everything around with the heater on. Uh, let it sit for five minutes. You can drive it, uh, short test drive, pull it in, let it sit and cool down for at least a couple hours, and then you can recheck. The best thing to do is recheck the level in the morning because that's when it's going to be at its lowest. So if it's burped a air bubble, uh, it's going to show mainly in the morning. And then you can re, uh, re-top it off to where it's supposed to be. Thanks for joining me on this one. I will see you around on the next video.